Hey everybody, I'm going to make another Cherry Burl travel mug. This one's going to be a little bit different in that I have been experimenting with ways to make it so that the, um, the stainless steel insert can be removable. The, the kits that I've been using are from Woodcraft. Uh, they're the Wood River brand. And they're just a single wall stainless steel insert liner, whatever you want to call it. Um, so you're going to get condensation um, on, the, on the outside of that stainless steel because it's only a single wall. It's not a, it's not a double wall vacuum sealed um, insert like you would have in, say, like a Yeti cup. Um, so I was a little concerned that the first one that I made, I followed the instructions mostly, and um, I epoxied the liner into the, into the wood part. And I think that that is eventually going to be an issue. I think you're going to get um, condensation in there that's probably going to get yucky after a while. So I decided to see if I could figure out how to make it so that the insert can come out so that you can clean it easier and um, also so that you can make sure that the inside of the, of the wood part is not getting any mildew or mold or anything. I just can't get over the grain on this cherry burl. It's just crazy. Here I'm just marking where the bottom of the blank is going to be, so I know where how much space I've got to work with. I've got a funky spot at the top there. You guys are probably wondering what the heck I'm doing cutting it in half. That is the mad scientist experiment that I've been working on. trying to get that face as flat as I can with my big sanding disc thing. And I drilled some shallow holes in the bottom of this blank. And also a depression in the middle of it. And you'll see why in a minute. Mixed up some five minute epoxy and I have some small rare earth magnets that I roughed up the surface with some sandpaper and then I epoxied them in those four holes. And then I mixed up some more epoxy and glued the sections back together using the lines that I'd made to help line it up. You know, I lost about an eighth of an inch from the parting tool so it's not a perfect grain match, but it's not bad.
I scuffed up the bottom of my insert with sandpaper and then I have a fender washer that I enlarged the hole a little bit with a unibit to fit around that little dimple in the bottom of the insert and I scuffed the washer up too and then I epoxied the washer to the bottom of the insert because I discovered after I'd done my first mad scientist experiment that stainless steel is not magnetic. I did not realize that. I figure you put magnets on stainless steel refrigerators, it should be magnetic, but it's not. And so my first try at this did not work because it didn't stick. And I had to come up with a different way to make it so that the magnets would hold the insert in tightly so it doesn't move around or you know fall out but that you would be able to give it a twist and pull it out and then you can you know clean the inside of the wood part and it makes it easier to wash the insert without worrying about getting water you know all over the all over the wood portion I used all of my hollowing things I used a bowl scraper with a negative rake on it. I used a box scraper with a negative rake on it, and this is my negative rake round carbide. And then I seeded my Morse taper as best I could, and then I have a big drill bit that's going to get most of the rest of the material out of the way for me. I did have to go back and do quite a bit of not so much hollowing, taking a large quantity of wood out, but just trying to get it to fit right. You can see those spirals at the end there. It's got a lot of vibration. So now I'm just kind of tweaking the fit. I want the stainless steel insert to sit down in there far enough that the magnets will contact the washer. And I did a lot of back and forth, making sure that it felt like it was sucking it in. Which you can kind of see a little bit. It's hard when the footage is sped up, but um, it actually does pull the insert in just a little bit. And then I taped some sandpaper to a piece of PVC pipe so I could kind of fine tune it with some sandpaper on the inside. I sealed the inside with shellac because I want to put a thin coat of epoxy on the inside of the mug as well. And I stuffed that little foam ball in there. It does help a little bit with the with the vibration. It gave me a little bit of support out there. One of these days I'm going to build a steady rest. Now I'm going to start working on the shape. The glue line for where I put the two pieces back together is a bit more noticeable than I was hoping that it was going to be. Um, I used to do bandsaw boxes and so I have glued up tons and tons of uh, you know, laminated blanks and I'm wondering if it's as noticeable as it is because I used epoxy in, instead of um, tight bond glue. Um, I don't know. It, it was a good fit. I don't have any gaps or anything, but I'm kind of surprised that the, the line is as visible as it is. It's not so bad on the part where the burl's really heavy, but on the straight grain you can tell.
looking like an ice cream sundae to me right now. So I had some thin spots in the burl. Um, I mixed up some 5-minute epoxy and put some mica powder in there just to make sure that those are all solid. And then the epoxy that I'm using on the inside is Illumilite Amazing Clear Cast. And so now I'm going to just go back and clean up all of the edges and take the epoxy off. I don't want the epoxy to stand out. I just wanted to make sure that all of the voids were filled. I ran out of the copper mica powder that I used on the last one, but I have some that was called chocolate, and it looks pretty good with it. It kind of matches the some of the burl pattern. Doing a little scraping with my skew as a negative rake scraper. And at this point I've put a coat of shellac on the outside as well. And I'm marking a good quarter inch past the very bottom The angle of the camera makes it look like I'm really close to the edge of the tool rest there, but I'm, I'm not in any danger of falling off. I couldn't get this thing to run true, so I just put it on there and did the best I could to clean up the bottom. So this is my setup for using resin as a finish off the lathe, at least for tumblers. Uh, this is what all the people who make epoxy tumblers use. It's basically plumbing parts that you can get from your hardware store, any big box store. Uh, I will have some still pictures at the end of this sequence so you can kind of see what I've got going on there as far as the components that I used and what I did to make them work. The frame I just made out of some scrap one by stock that I had, some plywood and uh, a couple of L brackets. I used another piece of steel and screwed that to the plywood so that the motor can sit on that and the steel holds it inside the bracket. I used another piece of 5 16 square stock to turn the rotisserie motor and I found that that fit perfectly inside the plastic sleeve of a gutter nail. So I cut a chunk of that off and I put the key stock inside it, drilled a hole through both of them and attached them together with a piece of um, 12 gauge Romex copper wire. And then drilled a hole in a 3 quarter inch PVC cap and attached the other end of that gutter sleeve to the cap, which then attaches to the rest of the mechanism and then it turns. That will all make more sense when you see the still pictures here in a minute. So I got everything coated and I'm just going over popping any surface bubbles that are coming up and I did have a few bubbles on this one um, from the this funky grain on this burl. So the tumbler turner, which is what these things are called, uh, I made of mostly three quarter inch PVC parts. You can see that there are a couple of threaded adapters and some pipe. There are the gutter nail sleeve and the square stock and the cap that I talked about earlier. The compression donut and an adapter that that fits on. And then I cut that steel plate and made it so that the bracket for the barbecue rotisserie would slide onto that and then it would sit on that piece of plywood. And it works out really well. 
I'm quite happy with it. There are lots of tutorials out there on YouTube on how to make something like that if you're interested. So there's the Cherry Burl Travel Mug version 2.0. I want to thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate it. Welcome to the new subscribers. I'm glad that you're here. I've got some cool projects lined up, so stay tuned. In the meantime, y'all be safe out there.